Yo, so what's good? It's your boy R.A. Welcome back. Today we're gonna be reacting to Bas ba Baton Rouge Drill. Lyrics that really happen. Y'all know, uh, what's the word? Louisiana. And I I've been getting to this, I I've been getting to this shit heavy because I've been watching the UK drill shit, you know. So I wanna watch, no, I think I got from Ace, 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 and, uh, Holy Ho 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 they beef, and I think I came across this channel. But anyway, we're gonna be reacting to this video, man. If you guys are new to the channel, smash that like button, subscribe, comment down below. Let's get to it. Baton Rouge can be a wild city. With murders and robberies going down every day, anything can happen in the streets. Crazy enough, the music and news tell us all about it. Here are some Baton Rouge drill lyrics that have actually happened. Matter of fact, I used to call you my big brother. Then you did some foul and had sex with my sister. Then threw it in my face in front of people on Insta. I ain't gonna speak on that disease that y'all gave to each other. In this bar, young boy is addressing his beef with another Baton Rouge artist named G Money, his childhood friend turned up. Although today, NBA young boy is at the top of the rap game and worth millions of dollars, the rapper had a rough childhood growing up on the streets of Baton Rouge. Wow. I didn't even lie. I'm the type of person, right? I don't hang around nobody who, who would bring harm to anybody. Like, I'd be honest, if you was my homie and you, my sister would give you some pussy, hey, I don't have no younger sisters. All my sisters are older than me. I'm the youngest. Hey, if you want to give sister some, sister want to give you some kitty, pull the old adults, hey, that's not my business. That is not my business. That's how, I, I know a lot of niggas get offended by that, but like, oh, you can't grab my sister? You can't touch my sister? You can't speak with my sister? Hey. Fair world, hey, it's a cold world, whether I like it or not. Well, what? What do you want me to do? You? Hey. <laughs> I was about to say something so weird just now. I was about to say, I can't sleep at all. <laughs> but it ain't like that, man. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. You can sleep at all. I'll be honest. You, if, you, if you were my boy, all my family members, you could, you could, you could sleep with them, to be honest. Except my mother. I'm going to kill you in this. I know you live, because I'm going to kill you, bro. You see, my nigga, you don't, you don't put your dick in where I came out. No, mm -mm, ain't that type of party. For everybody else, fair game. If they give you it, they, they, they give you it. His father was sentenced to 55 years. I don't think my grandma she even give you it. He moved in with his grandmother at 10 years old. Not long after, he got involved in the streets and ended up dropping out of high school at 14 to pursue a rap career. In middle school, young boy started running around with his friend, Lil Hurt, and together they were breaking into houses and doing whatever else they could to make money. Lil Hurt was the young brother of a local rapper named G Money, who was a few years older than the two, but became like a big brother to Young Boy. Shortly after dropping out of school, Young Boy got arrested for robbery and was sent to one of the worst youth detention centers in the country. While he was locked up, his grandmother, who raised him, died due to heart failure. Oh, after man. getting out of juvie, Young Boy was forced to ask his friends and family for food and shelter. The rapper even stayed with Lil Hurt and G Money for a while, who helped him get to the next stage in his rap career. G Money was affiliated with a gang and record label called TBG. Baton Rouge is divided into two sections. The upper section reps TBG, or Top Boy Gorillas, and the lower section reps BBG, or Bottom Boy Gorillas. So TBG was not only running the streets, they had also established a record label to launch themselves into the music industry, and G Money was one of their most promising artists. While Young Boy was staying with them, G Money mentored him and helped him get signed to TBG. Around that time, G TBG, you know, hey, you remember that, that song of NBA Young Boy song? TBG, that's what TBG mean? Oh shit. Money released a single iPhone 6, which featured a very young NBA young boy and another up and coming Baton Rouge rapper, Fredo Bang. This song Fredo. Too, established G Money as one of the hottest rappers Fredo in the city. Fredo's the coolest nigga I'm in the same time. Young boy also released his debut project with TBG called Life Before Fame, which failed to attract much attention. So G Money became the focus of TBG's marketing efforts, and Young Boy was pushed to the side. Feeling like he wasn't getting the respect his talent deserved, Young Boy eventually left TBG to focus on building his own label, NBA, his own crew, and his own brand. At that time, the rappers were still cool, but things would soon take a turn for the worse. In late 2016, NBA dropped the Project 38 Baby, which featured guest verses from major Baton Rouge artists like Kevin Gates and Lil Boosie. The title track blew up and established Young Boy as a Wait, song called? artist 16. NBA dropped the Project 38 Baby, which featured guest verses from major Baton Rouge artists like Kevin Gates and Lil Boosie. Okay. The title track blew up and established Young Boy as a major threat in the music industry. He followed up quickly with Mind of a Menace 3, which was also well received. Many of these early tracks contained subtle disses at his former label and partners, but he didn't mention anyone directly by name. Then, he dropped a track called Change off his project Before I Go, where he raps, 
Young boy, not TBG. NBA, it's a way of living. Hey. That's not just a saying it's not a rap star. My man would say, TBG, TBG, we don't know smoke. Something was saying like that. I just didn't know what it was. You know what I mean? Baby. Let it play, he gonna get it. Talk about it, like I ain't with it. Name it, you shook me, you know I ain't. You can save your breath, no advice took you. But it is. I see you looking. In this bar, he officially announces that he's no longer cool with TBG, and if they have any problems, he's ready for whatever. After he left the label, it seemed like there was no bad blood between the two crews, and Youngboy just made a personal decision to go the independent route to focus on building his own brand. But with this track, he made it clear he's no longer rocking with TBG, and if they have any problems with him, he's ready for smoke. This track was basically a declaration of war and made it official that NBA doesn't rock with TBG and they were official ops. On the same track, Youngboy even name drops a few people who would later be involved in the beat. First he raps, cooling on the phone with Dunk, talking about his manager, who can be seen riding around with him in the video, where Youngboy is rapping along to the song. Dunk would later be killed in retaliation for another murder in his deadly beat. Later in the song, he also raps, in the bottom with Deusa. Deusa is another rapper from Baton Rouge who Youngboy was cool with before this whole beat popped off. But just a few months later, Youngboy wouldn't be rocking with Deusa anymore after the rapper was allegedly involved in the murder of his cousin. In November 2016, another up and coming rapper from Baton Rouge named Boozilla was shot and killed. Boozilla happened to be Youngboy's cousin and his death set off a wave of retaliation shootings in Baton Rouge. Boozilla and Youngboy had actually been beefing for a while, but just made up before his death. Internet rumors suggest that they fell out because Youngboy finessed him for a pack, but they eventually straightened it out. Boozilla rapped BBG, who's known to be for TBG. So after Youngboy and Boozilla became tight again, they began to plot against TBG, which is why- Hey, you know what I realized though? Street war is a bunch of confusion, bro. This shit hella confusing, bro. All I had is a bunch of names, you know, no disrespect for, to nobody. It's just confusing. Maybe because I don't know nothing about it, but it's a lot of, it's like a, it's like, it, it, it's real life shit though, I know that for sure, but it's hella confusing, it's a lot of people. Why Youngboy started dissing them in his music. After Boozilla was killed, Youngboy was out for blood. Not long after his death, Boozilla had dissed Dusa, which is allegedly why he was killed. So Youngboy and a few of his homies did a drive-by on the suspected killers, and the rapper ended up catching an attempted murder charge. This really escalated the beef between NBA and TBG, with G Money responding to Youngboy's I, disses and I didn't know he did it. Youngboy narrowly beat the attempted murder charge after hiring an expensive team of lawyers who called in music industry executives to testify on his behalf. After spending about eight months locked up, he was given a 10 year suspended sentence, which meant he'd be allowed to walk, but if he screwed up again, he's locked up again. Not long after being released from prison, he released the project Ain't Too Long, which contained the song Poor One, where he talks about his beef with G Money. On the track, he admits that he once looked at the rapper as an older brother. But after G Money had sex with his sister and brags about it on social media, Youngboy felt pretty disrespected. He also drops the bar, when them killed my cousin, man that made me wonder. Showing that Boozilla's death also impacted his feelings toward TBG. Around the same time, G Money did an interview with Say Cheese TV, where he admits that he did sleep with Youngboy's sister, but it happened a long time ago, and Youngboy wasn't tripping over it initially. Not really, he made, he made about his sister too though. About his sister? Yeah, I had f***ed a long time ago. Oh, okay. Okay, I, okay, nah, he said, he said like that little kind of rapper. I fucked up. You know what I mean? He said, man, you know we have a little, you can say it better than that, but hey. Okay. <laughs> he, he, was, he wasn't really tripping on it back then, though, you know what I'm saying? He be calling me big brother and shit, you hear me? I guess. But after he got famous and started making some money, he let his ego get the best of him and was tripping over old emotions he had kept bottled up. But the beef was far from over, and more diss tracks and bodies in this ongoing war were yet to come. This next part is about an NBA affiliate who was tragically shot and killed in front of his girlfriend and family. Left him slumped under his car, he had his pistol, Lil Yoshi. Lil Yoshi is another rapper from TBG who got sucked into the beef later on after G Money was murdered. Youngboy and G Money had been trading diss tracks and making threats on social media. And one night, after G Money was leaving the studio, he was shot and killed. That put TBG at a major disadvantage on the music front with their most popular artist now dead, while their other two most popular wow, artists- Wow, he's dead? Hold on. No. And G Money had been trading diss tracks and making threats on social media. And one night, after G Money was leaving the studio, he was shot and killed. That put TBG at a major disadvantage on the music front with their most popular artists now dead, while their other two most popular artists, Fredo Bang and Boulevard Quick, were in prison. So Lit Yoshi, one of TBG's deadliest shooters, started rapping just to throw straight at the NBA camp and keep the beef alive. In this bar, Lit Yoshi's rapping about Youngboy's manager, Desmond Hartnett, aka Dump, who would become the next casualty in the war between NBA and TBG. 
By that point, Youngboy had already become one of the most popular rappers in the industry who was selling out shows across the country. That made it near impossible for TBG to hit the rapper himself, so they went after the closest person they could. In May 2018, Dump was standing in the front yard with his girlfriend and other family members when shots were fired from a vehicle driving by. His girlfriend was also hit, and they were both brought to the hospital. His girl survived, but unfortunately, Dump passed away. Dump was not known to be involved in the streets, aside from his associations with Youngboy. Before getting into the music industry, he had worked in construction and landscaping. Family members claimed that he didn't have any known Sorry. enemies, so he clearly wasn't prepared for the attack that would take his life. According to late Yoshi, he had a pistol on him when he was killed, which is common for anyone in the South, even those who weren't in the streets. But it was a surprise attack that no one saw coming, so he wasn't able to draw the weapon in time to protect himself. Dump's murder was meant to send a message to the NBA camp that no one is safe in the streets of Baton Rouge, and anyone affiliated with them can get caught up in the drama. The shooter's rumored to be late Yoshi and Boulevard Quick, who had just been released from prison not long before the shooting. But it wouldn't be long before NBA would keep the war going by dissing his ops on another track. He ran his mouth about topping them, got the drop, and then we popped him. NBA Youngboy, The Last Backyard. In this bar, Youngboy is rapping about Boulevard Quick, who is rumored to be one of the shooters responsible for Dump's murder. Boulevard Quick was locked up at the time of G Money's murder. After he and Fredo Bang were both released, the two rappers went on a mission to hold it down for TBG and seek revenge for their homie's death. They started dissing Youngboy any chance they could get. Youngboy had been kind of quiet over the past few months, mainly because he had no one to beef with online after G Money was killed. But after Dump was murdered and TBG started back up with the disses, Youngboy was right back to his old ways. It got so heated that Youngboy's mom even jumped in and told her son's two rivals to f off and leave Youngboy alone. Boulevard Quick responded and told her to mind her business, which Youngboy wasn't happy about. Just a few weeks later, Boulevard Quick was shot to death outside the Lakeside Villa apartments where he lived. The rapper was standing outside the apartment complex when he was shot several times. This made him the second TPG rapper to lose his life in this beat. Boulevard Quick's death is believed to be direct retaliation for his involvement in Dump's murder, in addition to his constant dissing of Youngboy and the comments he made toward the rapper's mom. So in this bar, Youngboy is describing exactly what happened to Boulevard Quick. He started running his mouth, but didn't realize that Youngboy still had goons all over the city. They caught him lacking in the parking lot of his own home, and the rest is history. After Quick was murdered, police started putting the pieces together that many of the shootings and murders going on in Baton Rouge were related to this beat. They started going after all TPG or NBA affiliates linked to any of the crimes, including Lee Yoshi, who's currently being charged with several attempted murder cases that came from this beef. An NBA affiliate named NBA Pat was also arrested for the murder of G Money, proving that the rapper was killed in retaliation for dissing Youngboy. With all the other top rappers either dead or in jail, this left just Fredo Bang and Youngboy to compete over who was the most dominant rapper in the city. Youngboy is clearly the more popular and successful rapper at the moment, but all his street beefs and wild calls have gotten him into a lot of trouble. He was recently arrested on a federal firearms charge that may turn into a RICO case, which could potentially put the rapper behind bars for life. Although Youngboy has always found a way to avoid serious jail time in the past, it seems like the Baton Rouge police and now the feds are caught on to what's going on in the TVG NBA war. They're looking to paint Youngboy as a violent gang leader who's orchestrated hits on rival rappers like G Money and Boulevard. Yeah, that's right. That, that, that's the place for RICO because he's financing illegal crime. But wouldn't Rico be for drugs though? Rico. No, I think Rico could be for, I don't know, I don't know. Wait, and based on his own lyrics, it isn't too hard to get that impression as well. Hopefully, young boy can stay on his best behavior and hire a good team of lawyers who will help him secure his freedom. And even if he does get out, it seems like it's only a matter of time before the rapper will be back in the streets. If you thought this video was crazy, be sure to check out our channel for more. From rappers and fights to scam rap millionaires, we cover the most insane. Damn, that's crazy, bro. Hey, have you on about the smoke? I, I, I always tell y'all, bro. Or you ain't no, I ain't no street nigga. I ain't, I, I ain't no dope boy. I ain't none of that. I'm a CLB. I'm a certified lover boy, man. Drake stole it from me. Yeah, Drake. I know you stole it from me. I was a lover boy since 2012. I was calling myself lover. But anyway, we can leave that one there. But hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. You guys enjoyed the channel, man. Smash that like button, subscribe, coming down below on the road to 100,000 subscribers. I know I've seen this far, but I still want it and I'm going to get it. With that being said, I hope you guys have an awesome day. Be happy, be blessed, and remember, the world is yours. Peace, I'm up.